festival a débuté en 2001 euh, à Gamanson, sur, dans un beau parc de verdure dans le centre de, de, de Périgueux. Et euh, ouais, dès le départ, on a eu un millier de personnes et ce n'était pas du tout euh, qu'un festival de jazz. One of the truly greatest voices in soul music for the first time ever in France tonight at MNOP. Please give it up for the wonderful Miss Betty Harris! Life with you has gone from bad to worse. You think you're the center, the center of the universe. You know how to give, but not take advice. un peu poussé euh, euh, par la petite porte à, à quitter d'une certaine manière périgueux à une certaine époque et à passer, euh, euh, à passer notamment à Boulazac qui nous a vraiment reçu à bras ouverts et, euh, et d'aller un petit peu en Dordogne et à nous étendre de plus en plus. Euh, euh, cette idée d'aller au contact euh, donc de, euh, des publics euh, d'autres endroits, euh, que ce soit à Bordeaux ou euh, euh, à Douchablouze, euh, avec qui euh, on a développé aussi des liens très forts. Et puis, euh, puis ça risque de s'étendre, le festival de Kessac, euh, euh, Brive, qui, euh, euh, qui nous fait confiance, à Razak, dans des petits villages, d'aller euh, au plus près des gens, de, euh, de les toucher par la musique qui nous touche. Euh, et c'est quelque chose de, euh, de fort pour nous. Bon, je t'ai emmené le blaireau des sables. Ah, le blaireau des sables. Tu l'avais déjà enfin. vu Non, je ne l'ai pas vu encore. Non, non. J'aimerais bien... Qu'est-ce que c'est que... Ah ouais, d'accord. spatial là-dedans. Back in 2007, I was playing with uh, Walter Wolfman Washington and the Roadmasters. And we were invited to come to Pelagou for the uh, MNOP Festival. then that I met Stefan Colin and uh, since then we have been very very good friends we keep in touch all the time and uh, I came back I believe in uh, 2008 with the 101 runners uh, a Mardi Gras Indian band that was an amazing experience we had a lot of fun <laughs> came back again and did the uh, MNOP tour in 2013 with uh, a killer band of French musicians, Julien Dubois, Pierre Chevreau, uh, Beau, and uh, Le Patriarch, Roland Dubois. That was uh, playing Jimmy Carpenter songs and New Orleans songs and blues, and uh, that was a great thing. <laughs>
And then the next year, I came back and brought the Jimmy Carpenter New Orleans Review uh, with John Groh, John Fole, Wayne Morrow, who is with us on this tour. We did a big show at the Palio in Bolazac. 2,500 people was really, really amazing. Um, I got to lead this whole three set show. It was, it was quite wonderful. At the end of 2017, Stefan called me. We hadn't talked in a while. He called me and asked me if I would be interested in putting this band together for this tour, the MNOP 2018 tour. And I said, absolutely, yes, I will do it. I would love to do it. Um, and that's how we did it. So we, we talked, we brought Billy Ayuso, an old friend of mine, Wayne Morrow again on drums, who is, uh, I love playing with Wayne. And of course, Big Chief Juan Pardo, who is, uh, just truly a wonderful guy and an amazing Indian, Mardi Gras Indian performer. Uh, he lives it every day and you can tell from his performances. Uh, so we put this all together, we rehearsed for about three hours and started playing shows. And uh, six shows this week have all just been one just better and better and better and more fun and more fun. <laughs> chanteur, pianiste et euh, je tourne avec euh, donc le groupe New Orleans Funky Review pour le festival MNOP. Donc je participe à ce, à ce festival depuis maintenant euh, plus de 15 ans en tant que bénévole au début, à monter des enceintes, des murs d'enceintes, aider euh, à, à organiser un peu tout ça et puis petit à petit aussi à y jouer. Ça m'a même un peu mis le pied à l'étrier pour euh, ce qui est le jazz, le blues. It's an honor, girl, just to have you right.
shooting you. What happened? The sunshine, France. <laughs> oui, oui. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Georges in France. La France. Bordeaux. Vive la France. Vive la France. Oui. Well, I am Big Chief Juan Pardo of the Golden Comanche Mardi Gras Indian Tribe, and um, the Mardi Gras Indian tradition dates back years, and it is a celebration of the coming together of the Native Americans and the, the indigenous of the Louisiana area, and as well as the slaves from the Congo, as well as from the area of Haiti. and the celebration of the cultures that used to happen in Congo Square in New Orleans uh, was a coming together and it was an opportunity for them to celebrate and practice the culture within New Orleans. And so the Mardi Gras Indian culture is a continuing tradition of the celebration of the coming together of two cultures that had a common enemy in some situations and also had a common um, goal in which to remain free from their captors and from those who were colonizing the area. À la Ménopé, quand ça a commencé, ça a tout de suite eu une formule transgénérationnelle parce que, parce que Jean-Michel Collin, euh, qui était un très grand fan du jazz de la première heure, son fils Stéphane Collin, euh, avec qui ils ont organisé les premières éditions. Et euh, bon, il y avait beaucoup de blues, mais très vite ça a ouvert à toutes les musiques de la Nouvelle-Orléans qu'on peut retrouver, comme le, le Cajun, comme le Dixieland, comme euh, le funk, euh, les Mardi Gras Indians quelque chose de beaucoup plus, beaucoup plus route. Euh, C'est ce qu'on retrouve dans le New Orleans Funky Review, avec ce groupe euh, qui mixe à la fois euh, des, des musiciens locaux. Il euh, y a trois musiciens, Julien Dubois à la basse, Olivier Léanier à la batterie, euh, et moi, et puis euh, les quatre musiciens de la New Orleans qui ont chacun un monde très particulier, euh, le blues, le rock et euh, les traditions indiennes. Les culs, tu peux le faire flat, il demande C'est pas que je regarde. Non, non, mais il n'y a pas de soucis.
I'm Billy Ayuso, I'm a guitar player from uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm originally from New York. I've um, been playing guitar for since I was 13 and uh, about 17 years old. I was living outside of New York and just wanted to keep going. And uh, just kind of followed where I could go to play music, you know. I moved to Providence, Rhode Island, which was a college town. Lived in a rehearsal hall, started a band called Brides of Jesus. And we were pretty popular through the 90s. And uh, it's kind of where I met the Meters and Neville Brothers. I was their opening act. And, uh, you know, I always kind of explored. I'm 49 years old, so I, I let, had a lot of albums. So I would read the back of the albums and find out who the musicians were. So I started hearing these names of George Porter, Alan Toussaint, you know, stuff like that on Little Feet records and stuff like that, and uh, exploring that. And during that time, I ended up moving to Georgia just because uh, I was kind of in the jam band world. And uh, the manager of Widespread Panic had helped us out. We lived there. And I kept going through drummers, you know, and I was looking for drummers are real important to me. And New Orleans got the best drummers. so. I was opening for the meters one night and uh, George said, you ought to move to New Orleans. So I did, that was 1996. And uh, now I have children born there, I have a house, it's home. It's the longest I've ever been anywhere. And uh, you know, I just the, the bond that I've made with the friends, with the Neville brothers and the meters. And I played guitar for the Wild Magnolias for a few years before Bo passed, um, I find that music very natural to me. The, uh, the Indian stuff is good for my style. I'm not a jazz guy, I'm a rock guy, so, you know, it, it kind of fits in with that. When we wake up in the morning, one day I wake up in the afternoon, one day I wake up in New Orleans, one day I wake up I like to play other places. Um, Europe has always been good. I played Italy before and France once. I was back here in 2011 with uh, MNOP. And uh, the audiences, they do, they listen real well. Uh, they're not so chit chatty, you know, it's not a social thing, it's more of a listening. They appreciate the difference of what we do, and it's real nice. It's real nice. And, 
You know, the hospitality is fantastic. It's tough to get used to the schedule, <laughs> but once I get into it, it's cool. I'm having a wonderful time. Making friends is nice. You know, music, that's one beautiful thing about music. Music is love. You know, it's, it's love. It's energy and love, and whatever brings us together, you know, we'll always have that bond, you know. And now that we have the internet, we can keep in touch, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to have all my new French friends. It's good. It's good. Peace around, and that's through music. The Mardi Gras Indian culture is made up of many different colorful artistic expressions. We have songs that celebrate life and that talk about struggle. We have songs that talk about the way we sew our suits and how we adorn ourselves with beadwork and feathers. Um, the music within itself is a very passionate drumming procession that goes through the streets of New Orleans as we sing the songs of rebellion and, and, and of liberation and resistance. And the culture, um, as far as us beating and sewing, we are telling our story our way. Because a lot of times uh, throughout history, uh, history, we often say his story. And what we want to tell is our story our way. And within the Mardi Gras Indian culture, we have always been in control of beating and telling the story the way that we want it told. Because each tribe also has its own uniqueness within itself. So you have tribes like the Yellow Pocahontas and you have my tribe, Golden Comanche. You have Golden Arrow, Golden Blade. And all of these different tribes have all different unique styles, but come together under one umbrella as a black Indian masking culture. The beating and the sewing of the suit is a labor of love and it is a year long labor. Throughout the year, once we decide what story we want to tell, we begin to gather up designs and some who don't do design also do pictures and stories. So we begin to put these stories on a canvas, just like a, a painter artist would do. And as we tell the story through layers and layers of beadwork, uh, we begin to bead our life into these patches. So um, the patch within itself is a portion of the person's life who wears it. For instance, if I begin my suit right after Mardi Gras and I'm sewing up into November, 
the whatever part of the suit that I'm wearing that coming Mardi Gras, I have everything that happened during Thanksgiving time is beaded. The spirit of that is beaded into that suit. So throughout the course of a year, you may lose a family member. And on that suit, you will have a patch or something that you were working on that will remind you of that moment in time. So each individual suit is not just a suit or a work of art that you see with your eyes, but is also a man or woman wearing an entire year of their life. They have that entire year on them at one time. And I don't know of many other cultures that do that. Quand on va en Orléans, euh, ben, euh, on nous parle de ces moments-là. It's such a pleasure to be with these people. The MNO people are my family. That I love them all. I hope everybody here enjoys what we do. And please, I want to come back. <laughs> Merci beaucoup à l'association MNOP. Et à l'année prochaine. <laughs>